I'm Danielle. I'm Teresa. I'm Tony. I'm John. We're ziplining Fremont Street in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm 55 today. Happy birthday, Trish! This is what we're doing right now. This is what we're doing right now. The Johnny. This is the second day in a row that uh, an accident has happened right there. Yes. Today is a very exciting day because the GH5S is arriving today, which means I can finally get back to recording the vlog in the way that makes me happy. Does your iPhone no longer make you happy? The iPhone just doesn't do it for me anymore. It just brings me joy to be able to use a camera that is purposefully built to capture images. It's got a nice big sensor on it, comparative to the uh, phone sensor, that is. For the last, like, six months of 2017, I was using a Panasonic GH5 to film the vlog. I had previously said that I didn't like that camera as much as the Sony Alpha or the Blackmagic Pocket for various reasons. The GH5S has the same-ish low light sensitivity that the Sony Alpha camera does. So the one thing that the GH5 had going for it was that it could shoot in 10 bit, which you really like for color correction. Yes. So the GH5S retains that 10 bit color recording while also increasing its low light sensitivity. Dang, that's exactly what you want. It also has time code. That's good for syncing. It might be good for us, it might not. Uh, when they announced it, there was some kind of issue where every time you turned the camera on or off, the timecode clock in it would drop seven frames. So it seems more designed for people who leave their camera on during a long film shoot, which is not how I use those cameras. So it's unclear yet whether the timecode thing will be of any benefit to us. It seems like that could be a firmware update thing. I sure hope so, gee dang it. Here it is, Panasonic GH5S. Micro Four Thirds camera. There it is. It's got a red S on it. Oh, and the record button is red. It's got a little red thing under there. Okay, here we go. First shots with the GH5S. How do you feel? I'm excited to see what the low light looks with that. Uh, I can also shoot in V-Log for your color correcting pleasure. V-Log? Yeah. Like, vlog? Kind of like that. Oh boy. Oh boy. How does this make you feel, Josh? That good, huh? And there's Halicia. Today's your first day of actually doing stuff. Yeah. How does that make you feel? All day. Productive and tired. That's a nice, a nice tree you got there. Does it look like Josh drew it? Yeah, so today you've been working on trying to learn how Josh draws. Yeah, my new job is, is just to be Josh, basically. Well, you guys look almost identical, <laughs> if I'd have People to say. say. That all the time. <laughs> my brother Josh. <laughs> Joshua. Yo. I have a problem. Yeah? I am supposed to run 12 miles tonight. Mm hmm It's 8.15, mm -hmm. so it's getting late. Mm hmm I'm tired, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. worst of all, mm -hmm. the treadmills at the gym shut off after 99 minutes. So I can't fit 12 miles into 99 minutes. That's like an eight minute and 15 second pace, which I don't think I can keep up for 12 miles. Maybe like 8.45, not 8.15. So I have to run on a treadmill and stop running somewhere in the middle of that and then start running again. And that sounds terrible. Doesn't sound like you really want to win this marathon here, my boy. <laughs> Having a camera that I can set down away from me, out of my hands, and talk to feels nice. I feel like this is what I've been missing since I had to send back the other GH5. Mr. Josh. Mr. Aranda. Have you improved your dabs per second lately? Uh, let's find out. <laughs> wow. I wasn't able to count, but I'm sure on the screen we'll have, we'll, we'll show how many dabs per second that was. Okay. Great. We should have a Josh dab counter achievement. 
Well, do we count every dab that he did per yes. second? Yeah. Yes, every individual dab. It'll be a plus eight or plus eight. Oh like my one. god. And then we can keep track of whether. Oh or my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Abby, how many dabs per second can you do? <laughs> exactly zero. I've never dabbed in my life. Oh, Alicia. One second. I've never dabbed either. How do you <laughs> Where does your other arm go? Is it like that? Do you go up? You gotta get into it, you gotta like dig deep at the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that dabbing? Wait, you moved your head more than I moved more. Too, you're too low. It's gotta go up to the forehead. You got chill dab, and you got like, it. hell yeah dab. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Where's my fidget spinner? Oh, oh no. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> room used to be a dance studio, so it had this uh, very blonde-looking wood floor in it. So we uh, pulled it up. Caitlin pulled it up all by herself. Yes, it did. I'm not going to take any credit for that. <laughs> it was a pain to figure out how to get the first few boards up, but after that it wasn't difficult at all. The concrete floor feels more like a utilitarian workspace. Yeah. It's quieter than those wood boards were to walk on. So that's nice. We can or either carpet. leave it like this, which I think would be okay, or we can look at some, you know, some of that low profile office carpet. This is kind of dark. I'm currently shooting at 3200 ISO, which on the regular GH5 would have been hella grainy. I can't really tell how grainy it is on the viewfinder. We'll have to see in the computer. But along with this GH5S, we got another thing that I'm gonna test out right now. This is the Lectrosonics PDR. So in the past, whenever I've recorded with a lavalier on, I've used the Juice Link Little Darling. It's got a mic input up here. You use these buttons to control the stuff. The user interface was kind of dumb. My biggest complaint with this though is that it was really bulky. If you compare it to the Electrosonics PDR, you can see that the PDR is much thinner. It's got a much lower profile. For the purposes of keeping this in a pocket, this is gonna be much more comfortable than this is. Electrosonics is also just in general a more high-end company. I think Juice Link actually has gone out of business since I purchased these things. As far as file management, this thing wasn't capable of encoding any sort of metadata onto each file. So they all had a date of like December 31st, 1998 at 12 a.m. or something weird like that. Also, the PDR can record timecode and it can jam timecode to another device. So as long as we keep the time code consistent between the camera that we're filming on and this thing, uh, it makes syncing up in post really, really easy. Okay, this is the sound of this microphone. It's the Sankin Cos 11D microphone plugged into that Electrosonics PDR. It should sound roughly the same as what we were getting out of the Juice Link recorders. I think the preamps on the PDR are a bit better than the Juice Link, so we probably have a little bit more dynamic range, which means that I can talk more quietly and we can bring the volume up in post without it getting uh, too noisy. All right, so I just attached the microphone to myself. I have the PDR in my pocket. It feels really comfortable in there, especially compared to the, uh, the Juice Link. It doesn't feel any thicker than having a phone in my pocket, which is nice. So the real question is, where do we put all this wood? For some reason, our office has the boiler room for the entire building in it. It's pretty dark in here, so maybe we can use this as an excuse to crank up the ISO and see what it looks like. This is 3200, 6400, 12,800, 25,600, which as far as I can tell is as high as this thing will go. I can definitely say that the camera is seeing back into that corner better than I can see with my eye. 
The question is going to be how grainy is this image because again I can't tell on this viewfinder. Anyway, maybe there's room down here to uh, stack all that wood. But now that it's 1030, I guess it's time to go home. This is at max ISO. See that, uh, that train back there? Once again, this is 25,600 ISO. I can see in the back. I can see, I can see the back of your car. I feel like this is probably not quite as sensitive as the Sony Alpha 7 Mark II. I don't think I was expecting it to be, but at least better than what it was. It is Good. certainly better. <laughs> but once again, I don't know how grainy this picture is. I just turned on something called extended ISO which I thought might give me more ISO options, but it appears to not have done that. Interesting, looking through the, uh, the viewfinder here, I can tell that there's a huge difference in the amount of grain between 3200 and 6400. That's uh, very interesting. The color temperature looks different between them too, which is bizarre.